Hi, I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. In this video, I'm continuing the analysis into Nietzsche's um, will to power. Um, specifically, I'm beginning with section 4.1 of the analysis, and we're going to look at the concept of emptiness and the role that emptiness play, plays with respect to both pessimism and um, uh, ultimately nihilism. With that, let's begin. So this is will to power. This is uh, section 4.1, and this is notes note 16 through 34. Okay, so on emptiness, on the concept of emptiness. All right, um, the first thing that we need to do is to pick up where we left off last, and in the last installment, of the series, what we recognized was the role of the masses, right? The masses and sort of this mass culture, this herd mentality, um, according to Nietzsche, is such that the masses are set in opposition to those that they want to dominate, the, the lower class. So we have the lower, middle, sort of upper class. He doesn't say this explicitly, but what he does say, as we said before, this is on page nine of the notes, the last thing that we said, insofar as the mass is dominant, it bullies the exceptions, right? The, the purpose of the mass is to bully, to strong arm, right? And who is it that they're bullying? Bullying those that are not part of the masses. So what we need to recognize then is that there, there is a sense in which the nature of this dominance, this ability to dominate, this desire to, to if you will, control and destroy um, those exceptions is rooted in something deeper. Right? And the question is, well, what is that rooted into? Where is this aggression rooted? Um, and Nietzsche uh, pretty emphatically talks about this idea of emptiness. And what he says uh, in a very, very, I think, skillful sense is it is intoxication. Right? It's through intoxication. Right? It is through intoxication um, that we fill this void of emptiness, right? So that if you look at the masses... Right, as having a huge void in it, it's through the process of intoxication. Right, it is through the process of intoxication that the masses slowly try and attempt to fill this void. Right? So the process of intoxication is an attempt to fill this void and the aggression that results uh, as a consequence of the mass, the sheer number of the masses is dominance, right? The attempt to try and dominate those um, and bully those who are exceptions to obviously the norm, right? Um, there are a few results of um, this process of intoxication though, right? So the question becomes, well, what, what are repercussions? What are consequences of this notion of intoxication? The first thing that we have to recognize um, with respect to intoxication is that it results as a weakness of will, right? Weakness of will. Now, there might be, uh, and there's definitely room for discussion as to what Nietzsche ne means specifically by, at least at this point in the discussion, what he means by the weakness of will. Um, does he mean weakness of will in sort of the, uh, the, um, the antiquated sense, right, um, which the ancients use, acrosia, right? Is it weakness of will in terms of acrosia? Is it weakness um, in will... Uh, in terms of sort of subordination or willingness to oppress one's will? What does he mean specifically um, with respect to weakness of will? I'm not going to talk about the many different ways in which we can interpret weakness of will. There's no need um, to get into that level of depth um, at this point. That note comes in note 29 of the text. Um, the next thing that we recognize with respect to the process of intoxication and the consequences, the results, of intoxication is extreme pride and the humiliation of petty weaknesses felt, right? Extreme pride and the humiliation of petty, petty weaknesses felt. And I actually want to read this section. This comes from note 29. I'm using um, the Walter Kaufman uh, translation of Frederick Nietzsche's Will to Power. So let's, let's skip really quickly to note 29 and just look at what was said in that passage because I, I want to talk just, just a little bit, not 
in any supreme amount of detail at it. Um, and this text is page 20, and again, it's note 29. Um, it begins, the ways of self-narcotization, deep down, don't knowing whither, emptiness, attempt to get over it by intoxication, a attempt to get over this sense of void, this sense of emptiness, by the process of intoxication. And he talks about all the different forms of intoxication that um, can result. A little bit um, halfway down, we recognize that he talks specifically about the two forms, weakness of will as a result, right, of this emptiness, weakness of will as a result, and then number two, right before note 30, extreme pride and the humiliation of petty weaknesses felt in italics in contrast, right? So if you think about this idea, right, of pride, right, and we'll return to this later, but if you think about this idea of pride, why does he qualify pride, the notion of pride, by saying extreme pride, right? Extreme pride and humiliation. It's, this seems to be polemics. And what we'll see in Nietzsche is he does this a lot. Sickness and health, um, weakness and strength, pride and humiliation. He'll, he'll time and time and time and time and time again, as we progress through the text, um, bring up two polemic points. Um, two points of opposition and challenge us to, to make sense of this, right? So, um, the second bullet point is actually is, is actually pretty interesting. We don't have enough yet to really be able to, to get into the text, but um, I know a lot of you are going to use this to do your own research and your own studies and supplement your own education. So it would be interesting to, to look at the polemic between extreme pride on the one hand, right, as one pole, uh, in opposition to humiliation. Um, in opposition to humiliation, extreme pride and the humiliation of petty weaknesses felt in contrast. Right? And the idea is, arguably, that this idea of intoxication results in this hubris, right? this, this exceptionally bloated ego, this exceptionally bloated sense of pride. And the question becomes, is it a legitimate sense of pride? I can't answer that question um, now. I think it's a good talking um, a good discussion point, right? When Nietzsche in um, uh, Note 29, uh, Part 2, right, in 29.2, when he talks about the idea of pride, do we mean, how does he mean pride in this sense, right? And I would argue that with respect to the notion of pride, especially as a result of intoxication, I would interpret that, though he doesn't say specifically, I would interpret this sense of pride as a false sense of pride, a sense of hubris, right? It's an attempt to... Um, and if you will, and this is my interpretation, but an attempt to manifest this, this, this boastfulness, this hubris, knowing full well that there's this void, right? Knowing well that there's this void, right? So the masses, and I'll give you a, just a quick contemporary example so that you can have some sense of what, why does it even mean anything? Um, I think it was the New York Times or Newsweek or one of those had a, uh, what I thought was a pretty controversial cover, nobody really discussed it, but it had, it said, um, the beaching of the white male, something like that, and it had, like, a white guy in a business suit on a beach with a, with a briefcase in his hand. This might have been, like, two or three weeks, um, before the shooting of this video, um, and it, something like, the, the, the idea was the masses, the mass in America, the white male, who had, sort of, predominance in society and an ability to negotiate wages now has to complete compete in a global market. So the the white guy is beached now, right? He's beached. He's he's left to fend for himself and compete. I thought, you know, I, I didn't know if personally I wouldn't have put that out, but I thought it was a little controversial. But nobody said anything about it, so I'm not trying to raise raise a stink. But the idea is, in an era in the '80s, in you know the, the height of sort of Reaganomics, when that same guy. Right? And I'm not trying to be offensive here, this is just conceptual, right? When that same sort of prototypical characterization, white guy came out in a suit and in, in, in the same briefcase that the Times, and I'm going to see if I can actually find that cover, maybe I can splice it in the lecture, if I can remember, so you can see what I'm talking about, in that New York Times cover. When, when, he, when he went to work in, in the morning with his, with his briefcase and his suit and his, and his coffee, was there a justification in his accomplishments? Was was his pride legitimate, right? Was it rather just a sense of 
attempting to fill this vacuous void, right? Was there a void in what I do as 